problem is worded, it implies we're looking for a natural number n such that n times 11 factorial is equal to some square integer. We'll call it k squared. And of course, k is, k is an integer. Probably a positive integer, I guess. All right. Now, another fact that's super, super important here is this results um, dealing with the way the square root affects an exponential. All right, so if just I'll just do a couple of primes. Let's see, let's do p uh, raised to the uh, 2a. Again, a is a non-negative integer. And then let's say q raised to the 2b. Now, just you know without too much formality here that this is equal to uh, p raised to the a power times q raised to the b. Now, some people get very, they get, go into the memorize mode here, but you should just be able to see this really that this object times this object is this object, is this radicand. And that's because you would have uh, pa happening twice, which is a couple of a's, and the same with q to the b, it's a couple of b's, right? A lot of people like to think in terms of the exponent x to the one half, multiply the one half times each of these to get a. To me, that's a little too dry, you know. But anyway, this this fact is going to come in super handy in our in our progress here for solving this problem. Now, the very first thing we'll do is we'll write down the definition of eleven factorial. Notice I left out the superfluous one; it's the multiplicative addition. We can leave that out. All right. Now, uh, <clears throat> based on this idea of the square root of p's raised to even exponents, all right, we're going to uh, look at this in a way, now I've already written this down, y'all, but just it's, it's just a matter, of, there's ways to do this with the floor function, I think, but 4 is the same as 2 squared, right? So you can see right now there's one copy of 2, three copies of 2 right here. This is 2 times 3, here's another copy of 2 right here, and then we have eight, which is nothing but twos, right? It's three of them. And then this is, uh, what, two times five, right here, 10. Now, you can literally count these, the occurrences. There's one two, now we have four twos, we have five twos, uh, uh, seven twos, and a two right here, which is where this eight comes from, right? It's where the eight comes from, just by literally counting the number of twos in this product, all right? In a similar fashion, you'll discover that there's four threes and five twos and then a seven and 11. Now, as far as this goes up here, we're pretty close to this being a square already. See, uh, this two to the eighth is two to the fourth quantity squared, three to the fourth is three squared, quantity squared, and of course five squared is already a square, right? So we have these two extra non-squared elements, seven and 11 primes. And uh, so we're looking for an end. So you see, this is, this is we got the answer working real fast. It's very obvious here that n would have to be equal to 7 times 11. All right, it's good to just write it that way. Of course, that's equal to 77. But then what happens, um, you would get uh, this would be equal to 2 to the 8th uh, times 3 to the 4th times 5 squared, right? And then uh, times uh, 7 squared uh, times 11 squared, okay? So our smallest n is indeed 77. Now, notice, why did I even say smallest n? We see we could tack on, once we have this n right here, we could tack on all the squares we wanted, all the fourth powers, all the sixth powers, all the even of any prime number or any integer for that matter. Now, you have to be careful with that because one of the integers may end up making th these exponents um, odd, and we don't want that. But you see how n would be the smallest integer because you could tack on an infinite number of other p squared terms, distinct, not necessarily even distinct. It wouldn't matter if they were distinct from these or not. So you can see you could just go crazy here. So th this is the smallest. It's definitely the smallest n. Okay, it would be inaccurate. Most people would just naturally find this n, but it's, it's the smallest n because there's an infinite number of n, n's 
that would that could make this happen okay all right y'all that's it and, and again i like the problem quite a bit because i think 11 factorial is in the 14 million range we never had to compute 11 factorial we just had to com compute its prime factorization and do some uh, routine uh, manipulations with exponents to get the end that we were seeking so uh, the answer here is um, n equals 77. Now, y'all, a, a deeper related question, some of you may already know the answer to this. Um, I'm wondering if n factorial can ever be a perfect square. I think it's a fascinating problem. It, it seems intuitively like no, but is it possible for some choice of n somewhere way out there or close in uh, that this is equal to some uh, square like uh, m squared? I don't see how it could happen, but I don't I don't know if I could prove uh, is 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 this possible? Let me just put a question mark or an interrobang here. Okay, is that is that possible? It seems like a big no to me, but I don't know how good I would be at formally proving that because you're just tacking on these extra factors at the end usually. Now, if you like here, you know it couldn't happen because eleven can't be paired up with something that's going to make it a squared. But what if you ended it at a like a number like 24 that has a bunch, of, you know what I mean? Uh, but, but the number four, it would be a prime, right? Maybe I'm talking myself through the fact you, this can't happen. No matter what, uh, you, you're going to have a prime near the end, probably, that'll, that'll keep this from happening, right? I don't know how to make that formal, but I would say you would have a prime number somewhere near the end, although that's not even accurate, really, to make that claim. That was just the example I used. But anyway, this is, this is kind of an interesting question then intuitively you say no, but what about a formal proof? Okay, thanks for viewing.